actually got to turn the heat on in the morning now. <laughs> it's only 11 degrees Celsius. It's not even that cold yet. <laughs> ah, it always gets me. You get so used to the warm weather and then it gets a little bit chillier and you're like, oh, I'm dying. And then in wintertime, it's minus 50. And then you get down to like minus 20 or something. And you're like, oh, it's hot. It's t-shirt weather. Welcome to Manitoba. So I have to do my rounds every morning, make sure everything's off, make sure the coffee maker's off, make sure everything's locked, make sure nothing's on that shouldn't be on. And then double check it and sometimes triple check it. And then I can go. So we're on our way to work. We're already hooked up to our gooseneck, if you remember. We're headed up to Pointe de Bois to pick up a big crate, apparently. All right, we're here. Oh, we got everything, pretty much everything ready yesterday already before we left. We're all hooked up, we're ready to go. Like I was telling you yesterday, this is my first day out with this thing on my own. I'm not really nervous about it, it's pretty straightforward. It's a trailer. You, you pull it with that and it comes with. I think I got this. <laughs> so uh, this, is a removable gooseneck RGN trailer this thing the way you load this thing with like a big tractor let's say you see there's like little ramps right here you remove this whole thing that stays on the truck Remove that thing and this thing gets set on the ground and then you drive right up on there but I'm not picking up any equipment today I'm uh, just picking up a giant crate now these are our step decks here the crate I'm picking up is obviously too high to be put on these and if you look at this one see how that deck sits a lot lower i'm guessing it's a really high crate we would be over height on a regular step deck we're gonna need a little bit of a lower deck and that's why i'm taking this today that's just what i'm assuming i don't even know what i'm picking up they didn't tell me much they said go pick up a big crate and some smaller boxes i'm like i'm trucker josh i'm your man i'll do it okay we'll figure it out so we got a whole bunch of dunnage, a oh, little bit of dunnage on here, tied down already. And uh, let's get to it. Let's get my stuff in the truck. Let's get her warmed up. Let's start headed up to Pointe de Bois. It's about two hours northeast of where I'm at right now. So it would be that way towards the rising sun and a little to the north, because that is east. That way it's into the bush. Our goose friends and our duck friends are still gone. So sad. They probably left for Mexico already. Lucky buggers. So this trailer is oversized just on its own. I can fit in my lane just fine, so it's not like it's excessively dangerous or anything, but it is a wider trailer than a normal trailer. So I'm not sure if the crate I'm picking up is wide or if it's high. I'm assuming it's high, because even if it was wide, I could put it on a regular step deck, but they sent me with the RGN, which is a low bed trailer. So that tells me that whatever crate I'm picking up, it must be high. Whatever it is, I'm ready for it. Bring it on. We're going around Winnipeg right now. That's Winnipeg off to our left. We're going around the east side. And then we'll be headed up towards Pointe de Bois, which is that way, like I said, into the bush. It's up there in cottage country. A lot of lakes and cottages and stuff like that up there. It's close to getting closer to Ontario. It's still well into Manitoba, but it's more so the Northern Ontario terrain type thing, if you're wondering. You'll see. You'll see.
sign over there, big sign. <laughs> Danger, thin ice. You don't say. Oh, didn't even know there was any ice in there in summertime. That's really thin. <laughs> Wait, no, I've been here before because I remember that big old building there. I've been there before. I think I delivered Pepsi here once. Looks like there's a big hydro dam over there. A big hydroelectric dam. Well, there's a school. I think that's a school. Yeah. John G. Glasgow School. My school never had a pool. The pool doesn't look like it's filled up, but... Woo! This thing's got some age to it. Okay. What is this place? Wait a second. Wait a second. I think this is where I gotta... I think my crate is around here somewhere, according to my GPS. I went right past it. So that wasn't the school anymore then. Okay, I'm gonna turn in here and get off this main road. There's gotta be a big crate around here somewhere. Oh, I'm probably picking up something from that hydroelectric dam, I bet. That seems to be the only big thing around here. Well, I'm gonna pull in here, make some phone calls, and uh, you know, it's not a very big town, so it's gotta be close by here somewhere. At least here I'll be out of the way. I'm thinking I probably had to go down that other driveway over there. All right, I'm gonna make some phone calls. We're gonna figure out what we're doing. So we're just parked here on the side of the road just around the corner from where I had parked before there's those buildings over there it was just the next road down sometimes it's hard to believe that all of this beautiful scenery is in the same province that I live in because I live in a very flat agricultural part of the province Manitoba has uh, many different regions the population is not that high though so you don't hear about us much most of the population lives, you know, in the kind of region that I live in. Uh, flat, agricultural. Not as many people live over here in, uh, in the bush by the lakes. This is where people come to get away from civilization. They come here to, uh, 
enjoy their cabins on the weekends and summer and stuff. And in the wintertime, they come up here for snowmobiling. But uh, once they're ready for me, I'm going to be loading right down there around the corner. For now, I'm just going to wait right here and wait for them to come get me. At least they know I'm here. And when I got here, I had no idea where to go, what I was doing. Didn't have much information to go on. Not that there's a lot going on here. This actually isn't a school. It's the hydroelectric uh, that bought out the school. They transformed it into an office building for them now, so it's not actually a school. Though it is pretty cool that they have a pool outside there. Obviously isn't being used, but if I was in charge out here, I'd definitely put that to use. I'd love to go swimming in my lunch hour. <laughs> yeah, there's a electric dam right here. And while I was in there talking to the guy, I actually looked at a map of all the electric hydro dams in Manitoba and into northern, northwestern Ontario and into Minnesota around here. I guess that they all manage. There's lots of them, a lot more than I thought. You can hear the water rushing. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera or not. Maybe if I shut my big mouth. It's right over there. This is one of the many hydro dams that's supplying power to our whole province. And we also sell a lot of our electricity to the state of Minnesota in the US. From what I hear, we sell it to them at quite a good deal. I don't know if it's true or not. It might just be a rumor, but people are saying that they actually buy our hydro for cheaper than what we buy our own hydro from. And if that's true, that's not really cool, but don't... just ate a mosquito. You want to see him? He died for his efforts. Welcome to Manitoba. It's our national bird, the mosquito. But yeah, if it is true that they're getting a better deal on our electricity than we are, that wouldn't be, I, I, I want to believe that that's not true, but someone told me that once and I was like, really? I don't know, you guys know anything about that? Let me know down below in the comments. Don't believe everything you hear or read on the internet. Just, I'm not too sure of the facts. These bugs really like me now though, yikes. Apparently one just about got eaten, now they all want to. So, we didn't quite need the RGN today, but uh, we got eight crates. <laughs> I mean, we pretty much could have fit that on a, on a flatbed, I think, but uh, we were told to bring the RGN, so here we are with the RGN. <laughs> oh well. Now this is beautiful Manitoba. When you think of Manitoba, this is what you should think of. This is eastern Manitoba, southeastern Manitoba. If you go a little further west, it's all agricultural, all just flatlands. That's boring out there. This is the exciting part of the province. See, we're not all just flat. We're not all flat land. There is so much wilderness in Canada. That's that's one thing I love about this country. I love about this place. It's so much untouched, almost what you could say unclaimed. It's obviously claimed. It belongs to the, the crown, but it's just untouched wilderness. Pretty much from here north, all the way through the territories, with a little bit of civilization here and there, with long highways connecting civilizations. And we're all under the same crown. We're all the the same country. We're a constitutional monarchy. We are directly connected to the British Commonwealth, so we are brothers and sisters with our friends down south, down under in Australia. We share the same queen. Queen Elizabeth II is Queen of Canada. She is our head of state. So our friends down to the south of us in the United States, they have a constitutional republic. Here in Canada, we have a constitutional monarchy. Pretty much what that means is in the US, their head of state is their president. And they vote on their head of state every four years. In Canada, our head of state is the crown. Currently, Queen Elizabeth II is sitting under the crown. She has it on, well, she doesn't really wear it on her head much, but you get what I mean. She is Queen of Canada. Uh, 
so we're very closely tied to the British Commonwealth. Uh, the UK and Australia are our brothers and sisters. However, we do have independent govern uh, governance and independent passports, so I can't just move to Australia and work. Though there has been talks about a Kansas alli alliance, which I'm kind of a fan of, where there be alliance and free movement of people between the UK, Australia, and Canada. So I could just, you know, up and move to Australia to go and work there. No paperwork. Just as if we're the same commonwealth, same country, right? Just little to no paperwork. I could go to the UK or they could come here. I think an alliance like that would be pretty cool. But currently, that's uh, you still need a passport to go between commonwealth nations. Uh, we do vote on our government that makes our legislation here in Canada. So we vote on our prime minister and his party. And they create the laws under the authority of the crown. And uh, the queen... The Queen has a Governor General in our government who is the physical representation of the Queen when she is absent. And it's a Canadian citizen. The Governor General, I forget, we just got a new one. Uh, but they're appointed, as far as I know. Uh, and the Queen has full right to veto anything she wants to at any time. She just hasn't. And she took long live the Queen seriously. She's the longest reigning monarch. She was queen, she has been queen longer than my mom and dad have been alive. But uh, we do vote on our governments that make our laws here, yes. But our head of state remains consistent. This bridge used to be a lot narrower. You used to have to wait on one end for traffic to come through. It was like one lane wide, or just wider than one lane. Two vehicles couldn't meet on it. Now you got a pedestrian bridge and everything here. Very fancy. All these cottages over here. Man, a lot of people with a little bit more money than me. <laughs> a lot of people. There's a couple of famous NHL players that have their cottages on the lakes here. Man, are they nice. There we go. Oh, I can close this again. I had to keep this open before to uh, keep access to the motor. Close that again. There we go. Now we have to tie down all of these things yet before we leave. And that'll be that. Just roll up the rest of these straps and be good to go. Idaho plates. A little stand right there. All the way from Idaho. It's a long drive in a little car like that. Since they've uh, since they've opened the border to U.S. travelers coming north, I've seen uh, several U.S. plates, but they're usually Minnesota or North Dakota because those are our neighbors, like right next door to us. Idaho. That's quite a. That's like south of Alberta. That's more than a full day's drive to get here. It's probably about a thousand miles away. 1,500 kilometers. We're headed back to the yard now. The time is just about time to go home. We're gonna go back and park this trailer grab my equipment and uh, park this truck, jump in the pickup, and rush home for my rock star welcome. Come on, Idaho, move. You to hope.
So it was a good day. I'm gonna detach from it here, leave it right here. Gotta grab some of my things off of it yet. My sign at the back here. Now in Canada, you can use that D sign that's underneath this, but if you have a D sign on the back, you've gotta put a D sign on the front. And I don't have a D sign for the front. So my solution, I had two oversized load signs. So I put one on the front of the truck and I covered this one up and so this one says oversized load. Now they match. Apparently MOT, which is our DOT out here, is very picky and very symmetrical. They, uh, they like everything to match. And if it doesn't match, the front and the back, it's a $300 fine. That's what I heard. It's never happened to me, but... I kind of like that because I'm, I like things to be symmetrical myself, but they mean the same thing, <laughs> but they have to match. It's not that I got all the bungees off of here. That's what I mean, the D. D stands for danger. I'm a dangerous man. But if you got the D on the back, you gotta have the D on the front. And as you can see, I didn't have a D for the front. So I had to make them match anyway. It's the same thing. D is just Canadian for oversized load. Watch out, I'm kind of bigger than normal. Get out of my way. Eh? This thing has no landing gear on it. It just sits on the ground. But you don't want to put it all the way down on the ground because that will be too low for the next guy to hook on. Then it'll drop off your fifth wheel. And good luck. You're going to have to find a big tractor to, or a crane to lift it back up for you. Or I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but it's, it's, it's a headache. So you don't want to drop it all the way down to the ground when you're just putting it in the parking spot. So it's a little bit involved. <laughs> you got to start the motor. Now where we have it set here on those blocks it's a perfect height for the fifth wheel for the next person who hooks on as long as they're fifth wheels about the same height as mine <laughs> at least it's not sitting so low so now i know that's where it's got to sit that's it that's all oh yeah i left this bulb in here to remind me to buy a bulb huh tomorrow not today. Today we have got stuff to do. I have a Pepsi Zero waiting for me at home in the fridge. So exciting. Yeah, I want to go home. See my boys, get my rock star welcome. So we had a successful day pulling the RGN. No incidents. Just saying. Behind that door is my rock star welcome. I'm pretty sure of it anyways. Yep, yep, definitely a rock star welcome waiting in there. Okay, you guys ready? Take your hat off. Take the hat off for this. Get my phone out of my pocket. I don't want to drop that. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm ready. Children! I'm home! I'm home! <laughs> oh, no, ow! Oh, you got me right in the nards. Buddy, how did you do that? You punched me right in the sack, man. Okay, that was a, that was a very nice, ouch, very nice welcome. <laughs> yeah, to you too. Oh, I got a frog. Oh, oh, easy there, easy there, you stallion. Open the door, I got a poop. 
Okay, okay, okay. Good to see you too, bud. And yes, there's a wiener here too. He's not very excited to see me. I never get a rock star welcome from him. Only Brit does. Come on, come on. Join your brother. Hey, Chevy. Come on. Come on, wiener. Come on, little guy. Move those little legs in the yard there. Okay. There we go. I gotta mow this lawn this weekend. So that's it for today. It was a successful day. Now it's time to enjoy some time with the family. Britt should be home from work soon. I think she's done work in about a half hour or something. I know she'd love to be in the vlogs a little bit more, but during the week it's just a crazy schedule we got going. Work, work, work. That's the name of the game. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you later.